The F1, uh, the American Grand Prix mm-hmm. in Austin, Austin Texas. Texas. Was this yep. the first time that it was in Austin? No, or? it's been there before, but it's. I think to, it would have been either 2019 or 2018 the last time it was there because yes. they didn't, of course, travel there during COVID. And fairly um, new to the tour. Yeah, to, yep. yeah, they've only raced in America a couple of times. Um, or at that tr- at least at, at, at that, that track. At, at least track. at that track. At that so. track. Uh, yeah. 140,000 in attendance. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's pretty cool to see. Yeah, some uh, big names there, of course. Uh, Shaq and Sharina Williams probably being two of the biggest. Yep. Um, mm-hmm. You know, getting some of the you know, big name talent celebrities. Of course, uh, the, the the club, not the clubs, the teams bring them in, mm-hmm. uh, put them on the grid as well, kind of, you know, to yep. help, you know, as uh, not sponsors, but as, um, and they're not mouthpieces either. They're, they're just just to bring attention to the teams. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, you ha- if, yeah, I think I saw like Ben Stiller was in the garage of, one of the teams, so really? yeah. yeah. So like you just have him there. He's like filming like a and like a Taylor Jack Johnson <laughs> kind of candid, you know, video. But it's just him with, in, with an F one team. That's it. Yeah. yeah, that's it. Yeah, directing it. <laughs> Watch that the other day. It's, it's a good song. So from from the actual race, um, I'll give a really quick summary of it because I think the main conversation I want to have is about the championship. So mm. Max Verstappen, of course, wins the race. Lewis Hamilton finishes second. Uh, Max was P1 after qualifying. He does lose that position to Hamilton on the first corner of the start of this race. Mm. Uh, but Red Bull and Max come back through their tyre strategy in this. They undercut Lewis and they retake the lead. But because of that strategy, late they have le- worse tyres than Lewis has. And Lewis, of course, comes back through the field, well, yeah. back th- Essentially chasing, mm. and they only finish uh, one point three seconds apart. So essentially, it was a it, really exciting race. Really, really close. You know, yeah. you could see that Hamas, Hamilton was chasing him down and was really pushing him hard yeah. to finish that off. It was it was really intense as well because they were they were relapping. I think some of the back markers. So Verstappen was having to fight through. Lapping Other him. cars lapping, yeah, him. Well, yeah. making sure Mazepin gets out of the fucking way. Well, it? that's it. Like <laughs> they're all supposed to get blue flagged and supposed to let them through, but mm. they're obviously racing as well against the cars in front of them. So they got pick so and choose. There was a train, yeah. And, yeah. So Hamilton arguably was able to catch up to Verstappen fairly quickly because of some because they got caught up in traffic. Yep. Um, yeah, that was obviously the tie issues that you mentioned, but yeah, it was yeah really. Close racing towards the end. What's yeah. a lap worth at Austin? Like uh, in terms of time. So, so what kind of time um, were they making up? Uh, a few minutes? It, so it'd be no, it'd be between a minute and a minute thirty is usually lap times for an F one car. Yeah. So fastest so Lewis had fastest lap at a minute thirty eight point four eight five. Um so Lewis was he would have been at least four or five seconds down. Mm-hmm. But he, he closed um, he into closed the closing it. laps. Yeah, yeah, he closed that off pretty quickly. Um, so you have to be within a second to get DRS, which mm-hmm. gives you more speed. Yeah. Um, About thirty extra k's. Yeah. So he was in the last couple of laps. He was coming up to that mark. I think in the last lap he came into that one second mm-hmm. within one second gap. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think he took a corner too fast and then actually lost some speed. So he bumps himself back out of that yeah. right. um, by that DRS detection zone, which yep. is where they allow they detect whether you're within one second to mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. into that straight where you can mm-hmm. um, change your car set up. Um, so he just bumped himself out of that. Arguably, if he stayed in that DRS zone, he would have won the won the race. Yeah, right. So it was like it's literally like a one one race mistake and not much in it. Not in a, much in, in a, it at what all. What is it? Fifty odd lap race, like mm. one mistake and one corner. Yeah. There. Literally Sets came down to like the last one, two laps. Yeah. So how many points between them and so, how many races to go? Yeah, so just before we get to that, shout out to Perez who did finish third mm. uh, for a Red Bull. Uh, came out after the race. He had no water throughout the entire race. So for an um, hour and a half time, a two-hour race uh, in Austin, Texas, in a hot car on a hot track, uh, mm. no water at all. They have a full drink system you know, tubed into them so they can take yep. water when they need it. So they stay hydrated. He did the whole race without any hydration. Why wasn't um, his working? Well, I think it was empty. I think they forgot to fill it or it had a bee's dick in it and he drank it on uh, for a couple laps in and they, they had nothing left. So, yeah, right. so he did the whole race without it. So he was, you know, 
And you've got to remember, these cars are physically exhausting to drive. Yeah, yeah. They mm. they don't have uh, all the niceties you have of your minivan. So. No air con? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Besides the wind Don't need it when, you drive, when you're going down the street at like 300 k's. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So big shout out to him no, to, yeah. for, for being a soldier through that and getting there. I think um, Ricardo finished fifth as well in this. Got over mm. 100 points in the season. So McLaren are doing pretty good. I think their fight with, Red, um, with Ferrari has been really good. Mm-hmm. But back to your point. I think how many races are there, James? I think there's twelve there's points. Max got another six on Lewis in this one, so I think he's six and six. The gap, yep. So Verstappen is on two eighty seven and a half. Uh, Hamilton is on two seventy five and a half. So What's the difference, point, James? Twelve, 12 points. points there. <laughs> yeah, I can do those maths. <laughs> don't have to carry anything or anything without that stuff. I don't think you had to in the past when you've got them wrong. <laughs> True. <laughs> <laughs> How many races have we got left? There is five races left. So we've got mm. Mexico, uh, not this weekend, next weekend. Um, and then we head across to Brazil. Then we've got Qatar, yep. Saudi Arabia, and Abu Dhabi. Fish and Abu Dhabi. Yeah. Yep. Um, mm. So, you know, five races left. Of course, winner gets 25, second place gets 19. 18. 18, sorry. Yep. So seven there. points in it. Seven yeah, points, so yeah. seven point difference. So fuck you know. all, really, with five races to go. Yeah, well, mm. exa- exactly. And if they're finishing one and two, you know, if Ma- Max finished second and Hamilton finished mm. first in two of those races, then he retakes that lead. Like so way. it is very close battle in this. But I am of the opinion... I think Max is starting to insert himself mm. into the into this picture of I'm the world champion this season. Okay, that's my thought. I think Lewis, um, has, I think he's played second fiddle. I'm going to say it. I think yep. he's and throughout the season he's been chasing Max. That's why I think the season feels like he hasn't been yeah. the one dominating, and Max is going to come through and win it at the end. Mm. I think Max has been in front, and Lewis has you know. Excellent driver, of course. He's definitely sure. – and he's had, you know, the challenges throughout the year. But I think he's just – feels to me like he's chasing Max, the young lion, mm. um, in this in this instance. Uh, and for me, it's – I think Max can, you know, win a couple of those races, extend his lead a little bit, and I think he will win this F1 championship. And he's 23 or 24, James. He's not the – I don't think he's the youngest ever F1 champion – but he's pretty young, yeah. probably yeah, the start cool. of his his reign as F1 champion. If Red Bull can, um, you know, keep this form going into the new regulations next season and the season beyond. Um, but for mine, this goes back to the last time perhaps we were in this studio a long time ago, and I was thinking, is this just a two horse race? Yeah. And that's the way mm. it's eventuated. Yeah, we thought maybe some of the others might do something. Hasn't eventuated. No. It is the two house race, mm. and you know, well, you're, you're talking about two of the best drivers in the entire world. Sure. So, sure. so yeah, they've definitely kind of pushed pushed their cases for why they're so good. Mm. There's a reason Lewis won seven plus championships, or well, seven championships, and Max, you know, is the young, like I said, the young lion. He's mm. ready to start his his mm. di- his his dynasty. Yeah, as you will could be could be um, as a potential world well, champion. Yeah, you mentioned the new regulation changes and stuff like this. This is probably Max's best opportunity mm. um, with all the unknowns next year. Exactly. So Who knows next year? To win that championship. So You'd think Red Bull and Mercedes with their, their financial backing and their experience building of fast race cars, they should still be good next year. But again, like you say, who knows? Maybe it takes them a year to get to that point and yep. someone like McLaren or Ferrari comes back through. Yep. They just have the right car at the right time and they win next season. That's it. I mean, yeah, they, they're still almost 100 points ahead of – next person there so mm. even if they do take a step back next year with mm. all the different uh, car setups there's yeah still I, competitors i will say as a general statement i think mclaren have been one of the funner teams to follow and watch this season um with lando and uh, ricardo there um, i think they've been doing and their battle with ferrari has yeah. been excellent as well so mm. um i, I think I've, you know, though they haven't quite pushed themselves into that conversation yet um with those two teams we mentioned before they're definitely starting and they've been doing some really good work there. So, Yeah, yeah. So in terms of the constructor standings, Mercedes is in front with 460 and a half. Uh, we've got Red Bull at 437 and a half. So you think Mercedes has probably got them there for the rest of the season. Um, and then, yeah, you do have that drop-off with um, 
McLaren seeing at 254, Ferrari very close behind them at 250 and a half. And then again, a huge drop off to um, Alpine there at 104. Is it the same point system for the construction? Because yeah, so the so the points awarded is it twenty five and eighteen yeah, and yeah, so it goes so where your driver finishes they so they've got two drivers of course so sure. they, they take those two points and put it on your championship, so that's why someone like Mercedes who've got Valtteri who's been doing really well mm. finishing second and third for them. Um, still gathering, he's points. still gathering big yep. points for for them, and of course, Perez mm. finishing third really helps Red Bull. Mm. Um, but they, you know, to win the championship, you need to both be both hard, be hard, but not out of the question for Red Bull to do it with five races to go. Yeah, exactly. They've, Perez can finish ahead of you know uh, Valtteri on a regular basis, and mm. then maybe even potentially uh, push out Lewis a couple of times, which will help Va- Max, of course. Uh, yeah, they can get enough points to push themselves into first place there for the constructions championship. 